Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Sons of History. It is great to be back. Alan, I am so sorry that I missed you last week. You did great, though. No, thanks. Uh, I, I had a good time, but, you know, I got to tell you, it, uh, I felt like Ed McMahon or Paul Schaefer running a show, and it just, yeah, you know, it didn't seem... Didn't seem right. So I needed uh, I needed Johnny Carson. I needed David Letterman. I was going to say, I have never been ha paid a higher compliment than being compared to Johnny Carson or David Letterman. Wow. Well, that's, what, that's what it felt like. So I was like, yeah, imagine watching a show with Ed McMahon. Okay. And, uh, you know, he did. Uh, uh, yeah, Star Search, right? He did Star Search, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He did. But, you know, I never watched that show. Yeah, he, isn't that what it was called? I think it was Star Search or something, but it wasn't really him that was the star of the show. It was all the talent that came on. And look, I don't mean that <laughs> I don't mean that in a, a roundabout way as far as talent goes. We know that you are the talent of this show. I'm just here yeah. to present. Hey, do, you know, it's all right because, you know, quarterback's not a good quarterback unless he's got a good wide receiver. So, you know, there you go. Amen to that, or a good offensive line. Yeah, that, that too, as we can see with the Texans. Not that I've been watching them lately because they're little politics. They need to snap out of that before I start watching them again. Yeah, they're a joke, but they've been a joke of an organization for a long time. But speaking of like having no wide receivers and no offensive line, poor David Carr, when he came into the league with the Texans, is just like, you know, there were commercials that made jokes about it, and he was in those commercials. So that's how bad that was. Well, speaking of finding the fort where that took place, we're actually going to be talking to a guy, Michael Livingston, who actually um, is going to be discussing the actual location of the Battle of Creasy. The well, before we do that, I wanted to ask you real quick, um, how was your uh, interview over in the um, New York WABC? How'd that go? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it actually didn't go, at least the first time around. Yeah, didn't uh, you fall asleep or something? <laughs> I didn't fall asleep. You were I asleep. I was asleep. And the show started, I was supposed to be on at 2.30 Central Time AM, and it was Tuesday night, like we were, I was going to be on Tuesday night. Well, I was thinking Tuesday night, not Monday morning. Um, so I was just dead asleep. And then I wake up the next day, uh, Tuesday, I wake up and I've missed seven phone calls, got an email and they're like, Hey, trying to get a hold of you. And I was like, Oh my gosh. So I apologize to Frank Morano, the host of the WABC show out in New York city. I was like, dude, I'm an idiot. Um, I also, no I also noticed, uh, you didn't mention my name. You just said your partner or something like that. And I'm like going, Hmm. You know, last week's episode, I did mention Dustin's name a few times, but... Well, it is our show. It could have been, my name could have been mentioned on WABC in New York City. People could have heard about it. Look, there. man, here's the thing. If you listened to that interview, I even told the guy, I was like, dude, I, I'm sorry. I was, I was a train wreck. I was so nervous on that one. Like, if there was a camera on, I would have just been like... There was so much that I left out. Like, my personal Ed McMahon, I apologize. My personal Paul Schaefer, I apologize. But, dude, there was so much that I left out and just didn't remember, I felt. I had the shake, so I apologize. But, yeah, well, you, you can good. go check it out. Nonetheless. So, anyway, all right, let's talk a little bit of uh, the Battle of Cressy. So. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about that. Um, one of the famous battles from the Hundred Years' War. Uh, this book was really good. Um very enjoyable. This is like big time guy, man. Michael Livingston's big time. Um, we're going to be talking to him soon. But I think before we get to that, let's how about we just do uh, This Week in History? Let's do it. All right. So mine is going to be October 22nd of 1962. Actually, you can l really look at the whole week, but I want to concentrate on that one because that was the day that President John F. Kennedy addressed the nation that we were on the verge of nuclear war with the Soviet Union. Uh, President Kennedy addressed the nation, uh, telling them that they discovered offensive weaponry, in this case, nuclear weapons, that the Soviets placed in Cuba. Now, how in the hell did this happen? Well, you know, 
in uh, New Year's Day of 1959, the uh, president of Cuba, Batista, he quit because the uh, communists, Fidel Castro, Raul Castro, Che Guevara, they were winning uh, the battles to take over uh, Cuba. So Batista quit. If you watch the movie uh, Godfather 2, you'll see that part of the uh, where he you know during a New Year's celebration where he quits uh, quits the regime so um, so yeah Kennedy came on and one of the things if you go to like around uh, somewhere between the ten to the eleven minute mark this is what he says which kind of freaked a lot of people out he said it shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States, requiring a full retaliatory response upon the Soviet Union. Wow. So, uh, so what happened was uh, we, um, you know, against the uh, against the rulings of the uh, Joint Chiefs of Staff, we imposed a quarantine, not a blockade, which is an act of war, but a quarantine. So ships can, you know, blockade means nothing gets in. But with a quarantine, ships can go in, but they have to be inspected to make sure that there were no nuclear weapons uh, on board. Um, now, the first ship that was that was uh, uh, boarded was actually a, a Lebanese freighter, of all things, called the uh, Maru Maruchia or Marusia. So that was the first ship that was uh, boarded. Um, you know, the, it... There was a lot of tension. We had a U-2 spy plane that got shot down. Uh, Major uh, Rudolf Anderson was killed. There were a lot of Navy aircraft that were shot at. And this was against the wishes of uh, Premier Khrushchev. Uh, but the, but the, Cubans, they, the, the Cuban communists, they wanted, to, they, they wanted a fight, basically. They really did want to fight. So we mobilized. I mean, I mean this was a full-time mobilization uh, we had nuclear weapons ready. We had uh, 82nd Airborne. They they went down to the Florida area. I mean, we were getting ready for war. Um, now, you know, a lot of people thought that this could be a trade-off. Uh, you know, Soviets will say, we'll give you Cuba, you give us Berlin, that type of thing. You know, Andre Gomeko, the foreign minister, was denying everything. Kennedy was... Kennedy had read the book called The Guns of August, so he was afraid that... If we were to start some sort of a war, that this could just cover the whole na cover the whole world, that that the whole world would get involved, and we would have a we'd really have a third world war. I mean, so you know, Robert Kennedy warned uh, the Soviet ambassador, uh, his name was uh, Dobr Dobrynin, that the gloves will come off if there's any shooting, if we have any planes shot down, we're going to take out every SAM missile base in in Cuba, we're going to take out all the offensive weaponry. That would be the that would just be a war with the Soviet Union. So now what we didn't know, fortunately, everything was resolved peaceably. We, we went to the United Nations. We went to the Organization of American States. Um, what we didn't realize was that there were already over 150 nukes in Cuba. Plus, there were submarines that had, um, you know, capabilities to launch nukes. It was a close one. But, you know, the United States didn't really feel it. The American people didn't really feel it until October 22nd when President Kennedy addressed the nation.